hello there in this video we are going to discuss about how you can create a new virtual machine by using custom or advanced configuration settings in the vmware workstation in last video we talked about creation of virtual machine in under typical configuration setting which are the minimalist minimalistic settings if you want to review that video f first then you can click on the i button on the right hand side corner and you can view that particular video so let's get started with this uh, the screencast of creating new virtual machine you go to file menu then you go to virtual machine it will pop up a wizard for you click on custom and uh, advanced settings now in this you can create a virtual machine with advanced options such as by choosing these easy controller types defining what type of virtual disk you can uh, have and also you define if there is any uh, you know, compatibilities required for the products of the VMware which are uh, of older version so once you select custom you can click on next the very first uh, step in the wizard asks you about that virtual machine hardware compatibility uh, and then this you define that for what particular previous version of workstation you want to make your virtual machine compatible so if every individual workstation has their own specified configuration so if I talk about virtual uh, workstation 12.0 and this it is compatible with fusion 8x and which, uh, workstation 12.0 uh, version limitations which it has is uh, 64 gb of ram it can support six maximum 16 processors it can support 10 network adapters can be attached to this and maximum of 8 terabyte of disk space it can handle if i show you some uh, some of the previous ones so let me show you this uh, workstation 8.x here these are some compatible products from the VMware which it, which this version supports and the limitation which it has is 64 GB RAM it can support 8 processors in comparison to the 12 pro, uh, 16 processors that we have for 12.0 10 network adapters are there now there is a uh, difference in uh, disk size also it's 2 terabyte whereas 12 version can support 8 terabyte and there is no support for SATA de devices or virtual camera support or any other direct extent because we are using 12.0 and we are not uh, having any obligation to support the previous versions we are going to choose workstation 12.0 once you do that click next it takes you to the setting similar to the typ typical uh, configuration it asks for what sort of guest operating system you want to install if you want to install it from your db drive which which for my system it's not attached that's why it's disabled you choose this otherwise if you have an iso file you choose that particular file by clicking on browse by default i have chosen this file last time for typical configuration and vmware workstation has a feature that it, it persists the path for for isos which you have opted last time and in case if you do not want to install any operating system and you wanted to do it later on then you can choose this last third option so i go for the second option again and as you can see uh, vmware's workstation feature can recognize that what is the operating system available in the iso right so it already recognizes it once you click next it takes you to uh, you know easy install uh, setup type of things where you just simply provide what user information and uh, the vmware will automatically fill up all those details during the installation process of linux so i am using uh, this machine and so my name is anupinder Sing, I say username is Anupinder, password is let's say demo. Again, password is demo. I have to confirm it and then click on next. Now, next thing it asks me that what is what should be the name of the virtual machine you wanted to keep. So I can keep it as a custom Ubuntu VM, right? So any name which you want, you can give the location, it displays you where it is going to save right and if you want to change you can browse it and it, then you can change after that i click next now this is something which is very important now it purely depends upon that what sort of workload you are going to put on your virtual machine generally there are three different kind of configuration which you can take for desktop based application you can use one processor and one core for anything which is relevant to running a little bit server based application then you uh, you should uh, take one processor and two cores right in case if you are looking or two processors if your your system supports that and then two cores for each processor in case if you are looking for some more high end workloads where high performance is required then you can choose any number of processor depending upon the capability of your underlying physical hardware and then at least minimum four processor cores are required 
for each each processor right so this is what is what could be the configuration which you can put in i'm only using the desktop based uh, simple application so i'm using one processor and one core at this point of time next it asked me about that what sort of virtual ram you wanted to allocate to virtual machine so minimum 1 gb by default it is allocating uh, by recognizing that it's a ubuntu operating system if you want you can increase my system setting uh, as per my physical machine hardware um, i have 16 gb so i can allocate up to uh, 14 gb uh, as per the basic preferences which is set in the vmware workstation that i show you in an another video so right now i'm putting in 4 gb for this particular virtual machine when i click on next then they ask me what sort of network do you want to put first so there are four options which are available so first one is by default it gives you nat that is network address translation uh if i talk about the very first option that is bridge network it gives the guest operating system uh, direct access to the ex external ethernet network which your host is connected to so what does does that mean that means that whatever the external network IP is provided to your physical uh, network, the similar set of or similar series of IP will allocate it to the virtual machine as well. And any other node on the network can go and access the virtual machine without any kind of uh, uh, translations, right? Whereas when you talk about the uh, network address translation, uh, it gives the guest operating system access to the host computer's uh, external Ethernet network connection using the host's IP address. So. What do you consider in this is that your internal virtual machine uh, or, or the virtual network will have a different uh, local IPs and your external uh, net Ethernet network have a, a different IPs and there there is a translation which happens between both the uh, networks when when your virtual machine requires to connect to internet or any of the other you know, node which is available on the external network. So this is what is the basic usage of this so here what you do is you separate the internal uh, virtual machine network from the external network and you can you do it sometime purposely right then third option is that use host only networking in this what is going to happen is virtual machine network are set up in such a way that you can only access the host through a virtual network and it, it actually creates a private virtual network within the uh, virtualized environment and you can only access the host but not outside the host or other vms not any any of the other network node can be accessed through this and last option is do not use a network connection in this you simply states that there should not be any kind of network connectivity allowed for the virtual machine so you isolate the virtual machine totally once you click next after this it takes you to io controller types now if i just give you a just that what sort of uh, controller we are looking at here is we are actually talking about two types of io controllers one is parallel and one is serial so bus logic and lsi logics are parallel con io controllers where a little bit performance is higher in comparison to serial controller which is lsi logic ssa so this is more of a input output based interface which you define after this when you click on next it asks you about that what sort of desk type you wanted to create for the virtual machine right now when you say desk type we are talking about a hard disk it's a virtual hard disk so all three options are available ide skeezy and sata so uh, this is again uh, related to the performance level and these are some of the settings which you can change in the later part also once your virtual machine is created you can go and change these settings so there's no issue with that once you click on next you go to the another type where you actually are going to define that what sort of disk you are going to create either the new disk or you are going to use the existing one for the virtual machine and all this stuff so if if i talk about the very first option here a virtual disk is composed of one or more file on the host file system which will appear as a single hard disk to the guest operating system the virtual disk can easily be copied or moved on the same host or between host now just to tell you what exactly it is so let me take you to uh, the actual place where where it is going to create so when once you choose this create new disk what it is going to create it is going to create such kind of files for you right once your virtual machine is done so what we are talking about is this vmdk set you are trying to create a vmdk file on your file system right and it will uh, will behave as an actual hard drive for your virtual machine just like an actual hard drive but it has actually been stored here and uh, this is what specific device which stores all the content which is being saved in the virtual machine once they are in running mode so let me bring you back to the uh, setup that, that's the uh, you know creating a new virtual disk when you create it it will going to create a vmdk file 
then comes uh, use existing disk type now when you choose this you are actually saying that you are going to attach one of the existing vmdk file to this virtual machine right so that file may be a empty file maybe a pre-configured file and you wanted to attach it to, it to this virtual machine that you that's all uh, by purpose the last one is user physical disk now this is very very crucial setting with and you have to put an extra extra cautious on this right because what it is going to do is it is going to attach a single uh, hard drive which is physically available on your particular physical machine so when i when you click on next it takes you to the next option where it says okay there are two drives because my system has two different drives which physical drive you wanted to choose and once you choose it it asks you about do you want to choose uh, use it entirely or you want to use a certain individual partition when you say certain individual partition then certain maybe more options are being arrived after this because i do not want to you know destroying my existing hard drive data so i would not be continuing after this i'd bring you back to the basic option and I take you to the first option here that is create a new virtual disk, right? Uh, so once you click on next, it asks you about what should be the size of that disk which you wanted to create. By default, it says that uh, 20 GB is going to be allocated. So I take that 20 GB and there are two different options with three different options which it gave. One is allocate all the space now and other two options are store virtual disk as a single file and second other option is uh, split virtual disk into multiple files. So what's the exact difference here? Uh, there are certain file systems which uh, do not allow a file size more than certain limit. So maybe 2 GB, 3 GB, 4 GB, right? Specifically if, if, if I say you are using a uh, FAT32 file system. There is a limit to the maximum file. So when you create virtual VM fi uh, VMDK file, they, they are supposed to get increased. As in the very first step of this wizard, uh, when we were choosing Workstation 12.0, it says it can support a terabyte of uh, uh, in a storage for a virtual uh, machine. So that means my my particular file can be of that particular uh, that much size. So if your file system is not supporting that, then then there will be a problem in the later end. So if we are aware about our current file system and we know that what sort of uh, file size it is going to be so you generally go for this uh, split virtual disk into the multiple files right or otherwise if you know that your file system can support it as a single file you can do it uh, uh, for this option so what i do is i take this uh, uh, split virtual disk in multiple file it has another advantage too that when you wanted to move it from one network node to another network node it's very quick to uh, move all these files uh, the last option that is allocate all the space now now when you talk, take this particular option your wizard is going to actually lock 20 gb on your hard drive whatever the path you have given 20 gb on that particular path they are going to lock on the physical hard drive if i'm not if choosing this if i'm unchecking this allocate all the space so as your vm grows the size of your vmdk file is also going to increase with that so that will be dynamically allocated so this is the basic difference so uh, that is the one uh, thing which happens here so once you click on allocate disk i am saying 20 gb let me uh, take you to my disk size because i'm using c drive so here if you see it says 107 gb is free and once i choose next and once the vm is going to get created it is going to lock that 20 gb size into my hard drive so I click next then it says that what should be the disk file you wanted to create so where it can be created that that also gives you an option here so one disk file can because I'm choosing the multiple disk file so it says uh, one disk file will be created for each 2 GB of virtual disk capacity so maximum 2 GB it is going to take for each partition right each partition of your VMDK file so I click next and then it takes me to the final uh, you know step of my wizard of creating new virtual machine here what it gives me it gives me a general overview that what are the different names what is the path what is the version of the workstation i'm going to make it compatible for then operating system which we are going to install guest operating system basically then what sort of hard disk and what sort of memory what sort of network and all if you want to customize you can you know go and click on the customize hardware and it will take you to another wizard and you can work out there whatever the changes you wanted to make so right now I'm not going to in that much in detail so I click on close and if you see there is an option which is given here power on the virtual machine after creation right so it's already by default checked so once I click on finish my virtual machine is going to get started.
But before it's going to get started, the hard disk size is going to be locked on the you know, system. So what I do is I, once I click on finish, uh, when the process of creating the hard drive is started, I take you to my you know uh, explorer and show you how the disk space has been reducing. So I click on finish, it says creating disk. So let me minimize it for you and show you what does the difference which has been happening. So let me refresh it for you. I refresh it, you will see the difference is there 104 GB which has been uh, no, there now because my disk space is increasing uh, for the virtual disk. In the similar manner, the hard disk is all hard disk size is also decreasing. So by the time the whole disk is done, you will see the final free value which I'm going to get here is 87 GB free of certain uh, GBs. So let me fast forward it for you. All right, so finally it shows me 83.5 GB. Some of the additional uh, inner space has also been created by your virtual machine. So that that may be the uh, you know, case here. So let me bring you back to the virtual machine. It's been started the installation for this particular Ubuntu operating system inside my virtual machine. So it takes a bit of time. Generally it takes 10 to 15 minutes depending upon what is your physical machine's configuration and what sort of processing or compute capacity you have provided to your virtual machine. So let me make a fast forward installation for you. Alright, so installation is almost over and this first reboot is happening. So first boot configuration takes a bit of uh, time. So here is what we get after the first in installation and the first boot. So uh, as I was using a demo uh, password. D E M O. So here we are going to get started with our first session of Ubuntu, and with this particular installation, the the setup of this virtual machine by using the custom or advanced uh, setting in VMware Workstation is uh, concluded. So in this way, uh, you can actually go and work on you know w creation of virtual machine by using the custom settings of the vmware workstation where you define a lot of various uh, settings at a very you know basic level and you have an understanding that okay uh, i'm using this particular network i'm using this particular virtual uh, machine disk and this type of setting i, I wanted for my io controllers and etc uh, etc et so with this uh, uh, we conclude this particular screencast session Thanks for watching. If you like this video, do uh, click on the thumbs up button just below this video. You can also subscribe to our channel for uh, getting updates on the latest uh, update, uh, updated videos regarding the VMware and other topics. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.